greetings and welcome to an LGR thing about the Cooler Master Musketeer 2 System Dynamics Detector Model LLC U03. And this was something that was sold for a suggested retail price of 50 US dollars when it first launched in 2004. And it often sold for less than that, depending on where you bought it, any kind of mail-in rebates and so on. But yeah, what exactly is a system dynamics detector? Well, it detects your dynamical systems in five and a quarter inch drive bay form. And by that, I mean it has dual VU meters for keeping track of your audio. It's got some stereo volume sliders and a hard disk activity indicator right in the middle there. So that's what that is. And it's also got seven flashing colors. It's got LEDs with seven color backlighting. And this was before the days of highly configurable RGB being all widespread. So you, you, know, you just get seven colors, but you're still six more than a single color device. So that's something. And it was available in two different color schemes, either silver or black. I got the silver one here because I want to pair this with my LGR Megaluminum Monster build, the Windows 98 PC with that Lee and Lee case and nice silver. Hopefully there'll be a matching silver, we'll see. But yeah, this was manufactured by the Taipei Taiwan-based Cooler Master Company Limited, and they're rather well known in PC building circles for their offerings of cooling fans, naturally, as well as cases and power supplies and peripherals and yeah, Cooler Master. They slap their logo on almost anything. I do have a question though, it's like, why is this called the Musketeer. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, I guess it has three dials, so three Musketeers, three meters, yeah, maybe. When it comes to these Taiwanese computer products, it's anyone's guess, honestly, but you know, it was also one of three different Cooler Master Musketeer models. This one being the second, of course. I don't know if that was intentional, but there are three of them, with the first one being just the Musketeer, and it was pretty similar looking, except it also controlled fan speed, and monitored temperatures, and it also had just one single VU meter instead of two. And then after this was the rather impressive looking Musketeer 3. Now this was an audio only five and a quarter inch drive bay thing, and it had a horizontal VU meter as well as volume control, but the standout feature was the vacuum tube amplifier. I'd love to find one of these, haven't so far, but you know, anyway. There were three Musketeer things, and I've got one of them here, and I'm curious to see how it goes, because you know, just looking at reviews from back in the day, hardware coverage websites were given it an average score overall, maybe a bit above average, praising its LED lighting and attractive design, but weren't so keen on the $50 asking price and the mess of wires that it required to get it set up, and saying that the original Musketeer was more useful. As far as the customer response when they got their hands on the Musketeer 2, it was generally favorable, with uh, the most common complaint seeming to be that a lot of the HD activity meters weren't doing what they should. Either it was completely bad, or it was just all the way up, or all the way off, or yeah, I'll be curious to see that. But yeah, man, I don't know, I'm just always drawn to these weird five and a quarter inch bay things. There were so many of them to choose from in the mid 2000s, as seen in this delightful photo of a build from a Tom's Hardware article in 2004. You just, they just stuck everything that was on the market at the time, pretty much, in a Cooler Master stacker case. I'd kind of like to recreate this at some point, but uh, yeah, you might also remember the Thermal Take Circle Fire that I covered on LGR a while back. It's a somewhat similar idea to the Musketeer 2, and in fact, that's how I learned about the Musketeer 2, was researching that. But of course, that had a built-in speaker, this one doesn't, which is absolutely fine by me, considering how awful that speaker was. Enough rambling, though. Let's get right to opening this, because I was lucky to find this sealed in the box. These are not easy to come across, especially complete. Alrighty. Oh, I got a nice little assortment of wires and things in here. So we've got, uh, okay, wasn't expecting this. <laughs> How does this work? All right, so apparently you get some switches for the LEDs, one in a three and a half inch, like floppy drive bay, it looks like, and one goes around back as like a PCI bracket. That's interesting. I was wondering how the switches work. We've got some more wires here. I know there's some pass-throughs for like the hard disk uh, and the indicator and other things, so. All right, mm, even more wires. I see what they're talking about in terms of the mess of wires required. Uh, 
This is to be expected though, this is just the audio pass through, very similar it looks like to what the Thermaltake Circle Fire was. Got some screws in there, some instructions. This is another thing I saw contemporary reviewers uh, kind of praising it for was the in-depth instructions relative to how simple the device really is. It looks like most of it is in other languages, but still you get eight pages of stuff in English. So uh, yeah, all right. And the device itself this is my first time seeing it with my own eyes. Hmm. I can smell it already. That's got uh, smells of paint and freshly printed stickers. <laughs> it's not a bad smell at all. Anyway, yeah, here is the thing itself. So we've got uh, two VU meters right there on the left and right side for the uh, decibel level of your computer's audio. Got some volume sliders and they do slide. They don't feel cheap, really. They feel pretty good. And then we have the hard disk indicator there in the middle, which a lot of folks were saying that it doesn't work, but I don't know. I'm assuming it would just, you know, turn on if it's just connecting to the uh, HD indicator LED thing, but whatever, there's where that goes. Standard Molex power, and again, the area for the audio to go in and out. Another HD LED, so that'll go to the front of the case, I'm assuming, and then here is the switch. Yeah, pretty simple and very similar in theory to the thermal take, but it feels so much better constructed than that one was. That one was all these cheap plastic weird components and like the meters were dangling around and stuff inside. They do move in here, it looks like, but not nearly as much. We'll see, maybe at least if they actually do indicate something that is anything even close to what's really going on, that'll be a hundred times better than the thermal take circle fire. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and actually, uh, I wanna open it up really quick just to see what's inside before we get it installed in the case. Oh, just voided the warranty. Well, yeah, there's uh, not much going on there. Not that I expected very much, but uh, there it is. Do you have a little potentiometer there for adjusting something? Perhaps uh, VU meter sensitivity? Oh, so this is just for holding the little volume sliders. <laughs> and there the uh, view meters are just soldered directly to the PCB with little LEDs behind them, single LEDs. Interesting, I wasn't sure how they'd be handling the whole multicolor aspect of it considering it's not like a fully adjustable RGB thing, but <laughs> there it is. And each of the meters do seem to be identical, at least just looking this way. And they just have different face plates behind them. So I wonder if that means they're all sensitive in the same way. Maybe that's why people were having problems with hard disk activity indication. Anyway, I'm gonna get this put back together real quick. All right, reassembled and ready to go. Now let us connect up the Cooler Master Musketeer 2 and see what happens on the Windows 98 PC. Okay, let's just get this apart and let's start with the back area of the case and the little slots back there. So it is a little more complex in this particular sound card setup because I have two sound cards in here, an A64 and an Aureal Vortex 2. Now they're connected together for reasons I've gone over in the past, but you know, it'll still work. I uh, just need to get a free slot here. So this is gonna be where everything sort of connects to each other. And uh, you know, I've got these two three and a half millimeter cables. <laughs> They're just gonna go between this back bracket and the Musketeer 2 itself up front. And this literally is just acting as a pass-through from one thing to another. So I'm just gonna stick that right there. And that's that. Doesn't need any power or anything. It's just audio cables. So uh, the main thing is we'll need one of these going from one to the other. So this is the output for both of these sound cards right here because I have them hooked together. And this is going to go to the input of the bracket here. And that's that <laughs> as far as the, the rear portion of the Musketeer 2. That's all we need to do. Now there was also uh, this other little bracket piece, if you want to control the LEDs from the back of the case, 
I don't really know uh, why you'd want to do that. I mean, you know, I guess if you just don't want another button up front, it's cool. But yeah, I'm not going to install this at all because I want to use the front bracket, which will go into a three and a half inch drive bay up front. Because you can't have too many buttons on the front of a PC, right? The more buttons, the better. I love how easy this is to access. This case is just awesome. So yeah, it's gonna go uh, right here. If I were to set this up permanently, I probably would put the thing around back just because sometimes I like putting other things in here, you know, zip drives or whatever. But uh, yeah, for now, I'm gonna put the front panel on. All right, it's getting bright in here. <laughs> That's that. So now do I put this here or here? <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm gonna put it here because yeah, I would have these two drives together, but there's cable restrictions. Yeah, not a bad match in terms of the silvers. All right, it's in there. No, you can't see much because all this junk in the way, but so it goes. So the next thing we'll need is uh, this little cable that it came with. It came with a few cables, but we'll be using this one. This plugs into the hard disk LED section of the motherboard normally, but since I don't actually have the hard disk LED coming from there, I've got a different thing, a SCSI 2 SD system for this system, <laughs> system system. And it's got an LED output on that. So I'm gonna plug that in to there and string that through because yeah, I don't have a traditional hard disk installed on this computer. It should still work just fine in theory because all it's looking for is the LED signal. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we'll try it, right? So this plugs into the HD LED in on the Musketeer. And then this wire right here, this goes to the LED that's actually on the front of the case. So it's just sort of passing that through the Musketeer and that's that. Next up, we'll plug in the little LED button and a three and a half inch drive bay. And go ahead and plug in power. And then finally, we just have these audio cables from the rear bracket to the Musketeer. So VU in and VU out is how they're labeled. And that's that. <laughs> I believe it is all hooked up as it should be. Yeah, it's kind of a mess inside as you can see, but you know, that's what you gotta do. It's just passing a lot of things through a lot of other things and making sure that Musketeer can see stuff from the system. The system itself doesn't really know that it's there. It's just all passing through, really. Yeah, get the case put back together, turn it on, see what it does. All right, moment of truth. Ooh, okay. It's quite the light show. Uh, is it supposed to? It has settled on red. Hmm. Well, there was a little bit of movement there from the VU meters. Hey, hard disk is starting to move a little. Yeah, look at that. As it's loading windows here, anytime the normal HD LED lights up, it makes this one go too. Oh, well, that's a neat little gimmick, although I can see its limitations already. It's either on or off. I mean, there's no other state really for the hard disk LED in a system like this. Mm. Yeah, those went pretty much from zero to 100 as well. So kind of wondering what the sensitivity is actually like considering how awful the thermal take circle fire was. Ooh, dear. Yeah, that like maxes them out. I can hear them clicking up against the edge. So yeah, no movement, no movement, no movement. There's a little bit of movement right there. Ah, uh, so yeah, it's ultra sensitive after a certain point. And in fact, there's a very clear delay between the left and right. Look at that. The right's pretty close. The sliders work at least. <laughs> well, you know, this is uh, maybe not quite as garbage as the Thermaltake one was, but it's still, man, pr 
pretty wonky, unfortunately. Look at that. What is it with the delay on that one? What would even cause that? I'm not sure. Well, we know what the first test is. an improvement compared to the circle fire. Uh, not that there was a whole lot further down to go with that. I'll run scan disk here just to see some hard disk activity. That's kind of cool, just as more of a visual indicator of things going on in your computer. It's not particularly useful, like the gauges, who cares, right? 25, 50, 75, doesn't matter. It's really just going all over the place because the hard disk LED is turning on and off really rapidly. <laughs> whatever. As for the LED situation, let's try that. So button is down there, of course, but I'm assuming we'll just, yeah, cycle through the different colors. <laughs> this honestly looked pretty good, uh, especially in person. Okay, so there was just the rapid one that I had on startup. Oof, that's a bit much. But the solid colors, I mean, they look, uh, they look solid, so to speak. That one's yellow is not particularly great, but all the rest of them, yeah, they're looking uh, awesome. That's just white. <laughs> yeah, especially at an angle here, I'm looking at it from the side and there's this kind of uh, lens on the front of each one of these meters that looks pretty awesome actually. Like, you know, it looks like a proper, like an aircraft gauge almost. It's uh, like aesthetically, it just looks good if you don't, look too closely, really. <laughs> None of the meters are really telling you anything useful. It's just the fact that they bounce around and it provides something to look at, which really is kind of the whole point of these things. You know, you don't get much information. It's just, it looks neat. So yeah, that is the Cooler Master Musketeer 2. It's a thing. <laughs> I could have seen myself enjoying this back in the day. Uh, you know, I kind of enjoy it now, despite its limitations and uh, general iffiness. But at the same time, I can't help but appreciate having like analog view meters, dancing needles. Yeah, just that kind of a thing on anything is appealing to me. Audio equipment, you know, any AV stuff, computers though is just it's a novelty, and I appreciate it. However, would I have wanted to pay $50 for it back in 2004? Absolutely not. I would have been pretty uh, disappointed if I had done so. Because, yeah, this is eh, not really a $50 product, maybe $25 or something. But, yeah, considering it was on sale so much from what I've seen, you know, rebates and just... Uh, ooh, uh, dropping in price as the demand for it wasn't exactly super high. Yeah, I could see it being something that would be a fun purchase, especially, you know, if you're prone to just pimping out your computer and going to LAN parties and, you know, doing all the 2004 PC things. That was the earlier days of <laughs> case modding and like doing RGB and not really even RGB, just adding colors, glowing things, cathode, you know, cold cathode tubes and and lights of all kinds. So yeah, do I wish it was like a fully adjustable RGB thing? Yeah, kind of, that would be cool. It'd be neat if the hard disk indicator did something other than bounce from zero to 100, and if like the left indicator actually worked for sound. I mean, it does, but not properly. Whatever though. The Musketeer 2. Sun is out, the streets are dry, and there's a and Midtown Madness, too. I appreciate the both of them together. And if you appreciated this video, seeing this thing, then, uh, yeah, do check out some of my others. 
<laughs> I've covered the thermal take circle fire as mentioned several times and I'm sure I'll cover other five and a quarter inch drive bay things in the future as well as who knows what else each week here on LGR and as always thank you very much for watching <laughs>